Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Kobo Arc and the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. Both of these tablets reflect the latest and greatest product offerings by both of these companies and you're going to hear a lot about them on the road to the holiday season. Today we're going to look at ebooks, magazines, newspapers and really what makes these two devices very distinctive. Let's give you some specs so you can have an idea of what we're working with here. 7 inch displays on both. Nook HD has 1440 by 990 for the resolution, whereas the Kobo Arc, fairly respectable 1280 by 800. They're both rocking dual core processors. The Nook HD has 1.3 gigahertz, while the uh, Kobo Arc has 1.5. They both have one gig of RAM, Wi-Fi, and Peter here is going to tell you a little bit more about the hardware. On the Barnes & Noble Nook HD, it features its upside down U, as Michael says, or N button that actually brings you home. Um, nothing else going on on the front. If you look on the bottom, you actually have the uh, proprietary jack they're leaning towards these days, the Nook jack. It's uh, very similar to the Apple ones that are on all the Apple products. However, this does not fit in any Apple device. You have an SD card slot expandable up to 32 gigabytes, regardless of what version of the Nook HD you buy. Status indicator light. Volume up and down. 3.5 mil headphone jack with a microphone power slash standby button and on the back you get stereo speakers and a nice hard rubber backing with their embossed U, uh, N on the back. Uh, you have uh, on the Kobo Arc you have a microphone, camera and a light. You have stereo speakers on the front, very good feature, we, we all love that at Goody Reader. Micro USB on the bottom, volume up and down, 3.5 mil headphone jack and a notch here so you can actually remove the backing to change colors. Status indicator light with a power slash standby button. Nothing going on on the left. And as we said before, the backing can be changed to different colors and it's stock with a hard rubber backing with an argyle shape. Basically, the main differences between the two is they both have stereo speakers, although the Kobo Arc has it on the front, so you're, you're going to produce better sound. Uh, the Kobo Arc does not have expandable memory via micro SD, so that's an advantage for the Nook HD. And also, the Arc has a 1.3 megapixel front-facing webcam, whereas the Nook HD does not have a webcam at all. So next, we're going to dive into the software elements. Okay, we are going to power these both on now so you can get a sense of what the home screens look like. First on the Nook HD, you can see profiles that we've established here. We have our main profile, then we have two kids' profiles. One of the cool things about the Nook HD is that you could establish parental permissions. So you could limit access to the web browser, movies, so maybe you just want your kid to watch G or PG movies and they don't have access to anything else. And then with the Kobo Arc, you just basically have a standardized Android lock screen. You can see here that the main home screen is fairly distinctive and if you've ever had a, another Nook tablet before, you'll really see that there's a lot of new things happening here. Also with the Kobo Arc, it is definitely a non-standard version of Android, but it does have full access to Google Play, so you can download any app that you want. What's uh, the carousel there? We have the carousel, which looks very much like what is on the Amazon Kindle Fire. And this uh, shows up with the uh, things that show up here are things you've most recently downloaded, used, uh, previewed, all that kind of stuff. You can see here that uh, it has a 3D effect and you can actually drop down certain applications from there and you can move them over to opposing screens and all that. Also, if on your carousel or on your Nook, if you see a little cloud, that means it's on your account, not on this particular device, but you can download it in the blink of an eye and it is now ready for use on your Nook. Yeah, anything that you purchase on, say, a Nook Color, a Nook Tablet, or if you have any other model of the tablet, or even ebooks with your e reader, they can all be synced directly to your tablet. So you don't have to repurchase anything. Any purchase you make directly from Barnes and Noble, whether it's an app, newspaper, magazine, anything else is stored on a cloud and can be synced to your various devices. You see your main UI here. In the past with Nook tablets, you had to press the home button to call these up, but this is persistent throughout the entire experience now. So we'll look into those, but I want to point out the way that the Arc has their home menu here. As you can see, we have reading, entertainment, social. These are called tapestries. 
and you can see that it's a bit animated. You have your reading life, books you've read, taste profile, libraries. You have a carousel on the bottom that's uh, mainly used as a discovery engine. So both of these tablets were designed to be e-readers first and foremost. So that's the experience we're going to look at uh, today. The first thing I want to see is the ecosystem. So this is like access to the store and what type of content you have access to. So uh, we're going to click on Kobo Store. And we have the Barnes & Noble Marketplace loading up here. Big difference from the old Nook tablet, Nook Color, if you guys have ever used them. There's basically a grid two by three icons there and then a gigantic bar with really huge font. This is definitely making better use out of the space. And one of the new additions <coughs> is movies and TV. This is something that Barnes & Noble's uh, introduced. They formulated a lot of relationships with some big, pretty big media companies. So you could rent and uh, buy TV shows and movies, you know, the Avengers and things like that. If you wanted a discount, you can actually rent it in SD as well. Yeah, and uh, the Kobo does not offer, obviously, like music, audiobooks, TV, and things like that. They're mainly on reading. And this is good because they have uh, almost 3.7 million books, whereas a Barnes & Noble ecosystem does not really come close to that. So this is just the presentation. As you can see, that there there's some similarities in the way that they do the carousel functions here, where you could fit more content on the same screen by merely swiping. Uh, if you click on a title, you know, these are primarily how it looks, whereas you can just see for yourself on uh, the Nook how an ebook looks. We'll go to the shop home so we can uh, look at what a book looks like when we click a title. So we'll grab a random book here and we'll see that you do have preview or Barnes & Noble's version, free sample. And similarly priced with uh, electronic books, you always get a little bit of a discount when you buy something that you don't actually have to something that's not tangible. Yeah, I mean, you know, they both have like the rating system and things like that. Um, the Nook may have a little bit more feature in terms of you can look at user reviews uh, more like this. You don't really see that with the Kobo. But in essence, you're, you, you get to see... It's the same stuff presented yeah. differently, basically. For sure. So that's mainly the store experience. Let's look at how the library looks. So it looks like the library on the Barnes & Noble is an up and down kind of all in one rendered scroll of uh, books, magazines, movies, TV, apps, everything you pretty much have, whereas the, uh, uh, the, the, it's pretty much books on the uh, Kobo. Yeah, um, this is mainly your, your library. I mean, Kobo is pretty well geared exclusively towards reading, so you're not going to see your apps and things like that show up here. I kind of like the way that the, the Nook HD is laid out, where it gives you sort of everything, but then you can isolate it to just books if you right. want to. I do like the Kobo, though. I mean, you are seeing more of your titles on the screens, definitely. It's a three three by three on one, whereas you get almost three more books on this one so you know little things like that um, I totally agree so uh, let's load up an ebook title this is the same book on uh, both devices using uh, each of their own reading tools so you can see it's displayed a little bit differently okay so let's show us some of the differences between the two if you tap in the middle you have all your <coughs> usual stuff you can Check up on the Nook. You can look at what it's about, basically, on the on the store. You can click that, uh, which is the little contents icon, and this will bring up your table of contents. You can choose where to go from there. You can press the font options, and we'll get into a direct comparison of that because uh, this is pretty much one of the go-to options you're going to go to every time you read a book. Drastically different, I will say. Um, you have eight levels of fonts margin settings, line space settings, everything changes live for the most part. Font styles, on the Kobo you have font size and then font style and then page layout. Um, most of these two things here, the column view, uh, works in landscape. Pretty different in terms of uh, what you can really do in that one font menu. 
you also have various themes on here compared to the three that are usually uh, accessible classic, knight, and sepia or sepia, whichever way you'd like to pronounce that. Whereas the nook has classic, black, gray, off white, brown. I, th I, I really like the brown, it's very light on the eyes, and a cream. So there's double the amount that you usually get um, in terms of themes on your reading. Okay, one of the things that Kobo does is makes reading a bit social. So you have Kobo Pulse here, and you can see that this book we're looking at is not very popular at all, but you can see how many people have read the book or are in the process of reading, how many likes it has, and you can actually leave comments. You also have, um, you know, the ability to leave bookmarks. Both of them could highlight text. And you can see with the Kobo, you get various levels of being able to select the color of the highlight. Both of them have the ability to make notes. You don't get quite as many colors on the Barnes & Noble, but uh, you do get different colors nonetheless. And yes, you can go and uh, long press and uh, add a note. And we will both write good. You can see the keyboards. They're a little bit different. If you just uh, bring something up there and add a note. You get kind of the standard Android keyboard here, whereas you get more of a refined Nook keyboard, if it were. Now, they are both running Android, but uh, they're just a little bit different. If you also long press on a word, you get share quote, which is you can share on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, families um, page, all that kind of stuff. And you can Facebook this as well. You see there it has a instant post kind of thing which I think is a lot cooler than the Nook. It, it shows you you can write something, share, cancel. It's, it's really Facebook-esque whereas this just tells you my Facebook wall. So um, I kind of like the way the Kobo does that. You also have look up. You can look up where they said uh, you can look up the word you have highlighted to Google and Wikipedia. Same thing on there, Google and Wikipedia. So they're both very similar. Um, a lot more full screened on this which is uh, kind of cool it gives you a little bit more info and last thing on uh, the nook is find in book I I've, <laughs> I've highlighted a period so it's gonna show up quite a bit but <laughs> if you highlight something like a person's name you can actually find where they're uh, mentioned in the book and you can go right to that page so I think that was a pretty good addition okay so this is more or less what you could expect out of the e-reading experience uh, the next thing I want to do is look at Magazines and newspapers. So we'll look up um, a newspaper here. Give you a sense on the presentation and layout. Now these aren't the same newspapers because um, we actually weren't able to find the same newspaper in either of the markets. And because you can't uh, sideload any newspaper apps uh, onto or any apps whatsoever onto the Nook, we're unable to kind of put the same Android application on both. All newspapers really on the Nook look like this. Right. They sort of have a very e-book feel to it, whereas um, on the Kobo, Kobo actually sells newspapers on the e-ink devices, but we could, and we've purchased newspapers, and we have ongoing subscriptions, but we can't actually access them within the library aspect of our ARC. So we have to rely on good old press reader right. to come to our aid. So this is a very traditional, very newspaper I've never been a fan of the way Barnes & Noble does this. It doesn't look like a newspaper, whereas this is the newspaper. I really like the way Kobo displays that. And you can actually go and do Smart Flow, and that will pretty much do the same thing the Nook is doing anyways. Yeah. So I, I really think that Kobo's doing a, a lot better job with it in terms of actually displaying what a newspaper should look like. And I mean, with the Kobo Arc, you are allowed to install Press Reader. Yes. With the Nook. Nope. Can't the install Nook, anything. Barnes & sells newspapers, so they're not going to allow any other company that sells newspapers exactly. to have apps in their app store. So this is what you're, you're dealing with kind of thing, and you have to go back, and you're not, it's not familiar. If you were to pick up a newspaper and then pick this up, you don't really quite know what's going on, whereas if you pick up a newspaper and then you grab the Kobo, it looks like a newspaper. Yeah. I think it's really great. Uh, complete with ads and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes ads are good. They tell you where the best deals are. It, certainly, you know, if we were to be looking at the Vancouver Sun, all those ads would be relevant to us exactly. because it's localized. Um, it goes uh, without saying that the Nook HD, if you are 
getting the U.S. version only, only has access to U.S. papers. Right. Whereas uh, with the Kobo e-ink readers, you have a lot of different options. And then with the press reader, obviously, you have, I think, up to about 80 or 90 different countries. Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at now is magazines. You can see we have a magazine here on the Nook, which is uh, Rolling Stones, uh, Daniel Craig kind of cover. So uh, we'll click on Zinio on the Kobo and... Uh, this already showed up on our home page, but uh, it's right here on the Kobo. Preview that. So, looking at them side by side, Mike, what do you think? It's hard to tell. It is. I would probably say the arc is almost doing a better job. It is, and it looks like there's more blues, like the hue is off on the, uh, on the nook. It almost looks like this is a more true peach on his face and true blues in his eyes whereas this is everything's coming off kind of like it has a different light on it almost we have a little bit of a different content delivery when we look at both these rolling stones and sees that we have different page turns as well you can see most of the ones on uh, the Barnes and Noble you're getting a lot of ads and you also seen animated page turns. So yeah. uh, part of like the reason why um, Barnes and Noble sells magazines is so they could be run through their you know proprietary magazine engine here. So you're almost feeling like a true magazine experience. Whereas uh, with this app, it's pretty bare bones. What can we do with the uh, text? If you double tap, you zoom in. Pretty much the same on both. Oh, we have. Pinch and zooms on both, of course. We also have a full grid view on the Barnes & Noble, which is actually um, giving us a, a, a wide look at everything in the magazine, which you aren't able to do in a real magazine. So I think that's definitely a, it's definitely a plus. Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Barnes & Noble's magazine engine. I find it's uh, very much ahead out of a lot of the competition. Uh, you also see article view there, and that allows you to sort of strip away the CSS or any of the custom graphics and page layouts and condenses it to just like a pure a pure experience so you just have text very easy to read you know there's no pinching and zooming involved at all it, it does change it into more of a book feeling by honing in on all of the articles and then you can by click of a button go back to magazine view and then you're you're experiencing the whole magazine as a whole. One of the cool things about this is that you can also make scrapbooks. So let's say you're a fashion designer and you have a bunch of magazines and I like that jacket, I like that tie, I like that, you know, coat or and whatnot. You could take pages and then save them to your scrapbook. So we have a scrapbook here we've been going through uh, just over when we've been using this casually around the studio here and uh, yeah we've collected pages and what you would do is go into your scrapbook and then you can actually oh we're in books here you can actually uh, go to your scrapbook which we have right here and view everything that we've collected you see we took a high color high resolution photo of that we just took the David Guetta article and we took some things yesterday so yeah I mean that's a really cool how you can pull articles out of a magazine much like you would with a magazine when you pull articles out of it uh, when you have the actual magazine so, yeah, so I think it's it's simulating having a real magazine which I think is amazing magazine experience hands down oh nook hands HD. down the nook yeah definitely okay now I want to point out the way that the Kobo arc handles everything very traditional Android experience here full access to Google Play Absolutely zero access to Google Play <laughs> on the um, Nook. You just have the marketplace to work with. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, the limits of this is that uh, with the Kobo Arc, you can install Kindle. You can install Nook. You can install Sony. You can install uh, any type of other reading store that you want. Whereas, if you get the Nook HD, you're pretty well relegated to 100%. just doing business with Barnes & Noble. Yeah. So. That's the main thing I wanted to point out. So a lot of people like Google Play. I do like it myself. But I wanted to point out that it does have traditional Android experience uh, because the main UI looks a bit different. So uh, the next thing that we want to look at is video. 
So you see we have both playing right now. And the uh, audio is actually coming out of the Kobo, so we'll let you listen to that for a sec. Now what we're going to do actually is uh, turn up the volume on the uh, Nook. You know, I'm almost liking the Kobo Arcs audio a lot better because it's on the front here, whereas this is completely on the flat back. It's actually getting a little bit muffled. I concur. Okay, we got a high color picture here. What do you what are you thinking, Mike, in terms of picture quality? Let's wait to there. Go. I don't know. They're almost about equal. They are. Um, of course, it's a lot clearer in uh, person as well. Um, yeah, you see. If we look at the colors here for a sec, we know they're not synced, but I think, you know, quality-wise, I think they're just about the same. They're just different. There's more pinks into here, but the the reds are more vibrant over here. But um, in terms of quality, uh, this is the same trailer put on both devices. I think I think they're doing they're both doing a really good job. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why you would get a tablet over a dedicated e-reader so you can do things like this. Absolutely. And so it's very important that we do put the same videos side by side along with audio yeah. to give you a sense on how the sound quality is because I know a lot of people that listen to audio books, listen to music while they read and, and sound quality is very important to them. And I mean, obviously it is because yeah. I, when I use tablets, I don't like to use headphones. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, except when I play games like The Walking Dead where it's <laughs> like very atmospheric, unless you have headphones, you're not getting those crickets chirping uh, out of anything but maybe the Kindle Fire HD with the, you know, Dolby, Dolby surround yeah. sound built in, yeah. Okay, so we've looked at a lot of the things that make these very different. What are your final thoughts? Final thoughts, I would say I am... I like Android, so both of these are right down my alley. But honestly, the Nook, unless you live in the UK or in the USA, it is pretty useless to you out of the box. You can use uh, US credit cards and US uh, addresses and gift cards to get around certain things, but no matter what you do, you can actually still not download any... Uh, you can download and pay for movies and TV shows, but you cannot watch them because they will not allow you unless you're in the US. I don't like how you can't sideload anything onto this. I don't like how it doesn't have uh, a camera. I, I don't like how it looks like a bar of soap. I mean, I don't like how the speakers are on the back. There's so many things about it that I just, they don't appeal to me. Whereas the Kobo, it's got stereo speakers on the front. It's got a wicked fast processor, a great screen, really loud audio. You can sideload anything you want into it, such as the Goody Reader App Store. And you have access to Google Play. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. And I think it's one of the best uh, tablets they released obviously because it's a gigantic leap over the Vox. I would just say hands down it's got to go to the Kobo uh, Arc. Yeah I mean uh, I do like I do like both devices. They both bring something very unique to the table. Um, there's pros and cons. Like Barnes & Noble, for instance, has a way better magazine um, and uh, newspaper selection than, than Kobo offers. Hardware differences aside, it's all about the ecosystem. If you're the type of person that loads in a lot of apps and you want access to Google Play to install basically whatever you want, you're good to go. If you're happy with Barnes & Noble's curated app store where most of the apps were designed exclusively for their line of tablets, that's fine. I do like the way that Barnes & Noble handles um, magazines. I find that um, the features they build to make scrapbooks very unique. I like the, you know, I, I like a lot of things about it. 
if I were to make a decision between the two, I'd probably go with the Kobo Arc just because it's more versatile. I can do more things with it, and it's in my power if I want to install Kindle app, you know, because I, I do business with a lot of companies, and that's important. With the Nook, you're able to load in books that you've purchased from other companies other than Amazon because they have their own proprietary ebook format. But, you know, I can buy books from Kobo and then use Adobe Digital Editions to put them on my Nook tablet. It's jumping through many hoops, whereas I could just install the Nook app on the Kobo Arc. I don't have to worry about Adobe Digital Editions. I just enter my login details and I'm basically good to go. And then also you can install alternative Android app stores on here too. So we'll leave it up to you guys to, to uh, decide which you like better. Give us your reasons and why. Please comment on this video on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodyreader. And also our website at goodyreader.com. And for a comparison of the Kobo Arc and Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet HD, my name is Michael. And this is Peter. Everybody take care.